October 26, 1944, a pilot named Gertrude Tompkins Silver took off in an airplane from Mines Field, which is now LAX, Mm -hmm. at 3.42 p.m., headed to arrive in Palm Springs a few hours later. Immediately after takeoff, her plane went into some fog and was never seen again. No wreckage, no body, nothing. Gertrude Tompkins Silver disappeared. So you don't think alien abductions are scary? That's clearly what happened here, cut and dry. On first glance, that's that's what I got. <laughs> clearly what I thought of. <laughs> I'll pay you 30 pieces of silver for just a sliver of your knowledge of Gertrude Tompkins silver, <laughs> and I'll throw in the son of God for free. You don't have to do this. You could just read. No, I told you at the beginning, I do have to do this. <laughs> I'm legally obligated to do this. This is part of the contract. Alien abduction was never, never even on the table here. Alien abductions have more... It doesn't happen that quickly. It's not like the tractor beam pulling in the Millennium Falcon. Okay, first of all, you don't understand anything about aliens because they are the fog. I'm going to look up what your Roswell happened, and you're going to feel like an idiot. Was that like 1941? One or something? Oh my god. Oh my god. Mines October Field. 31st, 1940, whatever you said. <laughs> they transported Mines Fields from Roswell. That's alien crash land. <laughs> 1947. Three years later, that thing crashes in New Mexico. That Gertrude Tompkins so <laughs> found in New Mexico. So this is the story of somebody I think most of the meek sad sacks who listen to us are going to relate to. And also, pro- they're going to get sad, not spooked. So same thing too. That's another same thing. <laughs> Sadness is frightening to me. Gertrude Vreeland Tompkins. V R E E L A N D. I've seen that before Have as you really? a name, but the first time I saw it, I'm like, that's not a name. But now I'm hearing it again, like maybe it's a name. <laughs> this is certainly the name of a Dutch company, but not a person's name. Gertrude Vreeland Tompkins was born October 16th, 1912, in Jersey City, New Jersey, to Laura and Vreeland Tompkins. So d- her dad named her after him. Dads who make their daughters take their weird kind of mannish name after. As their middle name why why would you do why that? would you ever do that especially if you're Vreeland do you hate your daughter that much do you hate your daughter that much or do you love yourself that much <laughs> why are they mutually exclusive <laughs> didn't really matter because she usually went by the nickname Tommy uh, her dad had been a chemist for John D Rockefeller who then went on to start his own company called smooth on Inc in 1895 that made iron cement which you could use to repair holes and leaks in irons and is still around today the best I can tell from looking at them online is that they now make giant inflatable donuts <laughs> That's pretty cool. 1895 was when he came up with that company. That's such a 1970s like roller disco Smooth afro on. name. Like you'd yeah, hear that they on re-brand- Soul Trade. They yeah. rebranded in the 70s as a palmade company. <laughs> it also worked on iron. <laughs> he also had an unfortunate stutter, Vreeland. And just as unfortunate, that stutter was passed down to Gertrude, oh, no. which became the bane of her existence. Like it defined her life. She was teased mercilessly because of it by the other kids in her school. They made up a song about her. She- and it went a little something like this. Cue the guitar solo. Tom Morello. Kids just had so much more time back then That's to what I was sit amazed and by. compose a song to bully a girl. And they think bullying is bad now. They wrote a song about this girl. And they couldn't do it on GarageBand. So here's how the song went. My name is little Gertrude and I am only three. Some people say I stutter and no one cares for me. My mama used to stutter when she married Papa too. It took three days to marry because the preacher stuttered too. And this of course was sung with kids stuttering on most of the letters, which sounds not only not nice, but also not fun to sing. And also, it was her dad who had the stutter, not the mom, you idiots. Yeah, do your research, George Gershwin. <laughs> that kid? This was <laughs> the first song. <laughs> to be Gershwin. Weird Al Yankovic. The next song he wrote, Rhapsody in Blue, but R.A.P. <laughs> the third Gershwin brother. Weird Ira Gershwin. <laughs> so because of this bullying, she eventually stopped trying to participate in class for fear of being made fun of, which led her to staying home from school, claiming she was sick, but really she was just Crying. being made. Yeah, she was just it was not fun for her. And eventually she just wouldn't talk to people because she was ashamed of her stutter so she just got swallowed by herself goes without saying but i'll say it anyway she was not a confident person because that's important to the story i know what you're saying now that about the sad sex who listen to this podcast <laughs> i get it now her family tried every crazy backwoods remedy they could think of to cure her stutter and they it got crazier and crazier they put nutmeg under her tongue which sounds pleasant then they made her take baths in the ocean not too bad unless you're me i would never do that so then they started feeding her small amounts of arsenic and strychnine it sounds like old remedies like you have three dice with words on them and you roll the dice and you're like bathtub in yeah. ocean okay. tea yeah. with dog meat <laughs> yep that's the remedy to solve your stuttering let's try two things that maybe could work didn't work let's poison her this is like torture with I mean not that poisoning her isn't but then they made her stay silent for a week and then each week after that speak only in a whisper that got progressively louder and louder until she was speaking at normal volume and the idea was then your stutter will be cured how you 
your tongue just needed to rest. It turns out that you were so excited to talk that you developed a stutter that was hereditary that your dad has. Slow down, slow Gertrude. Slow down. Hit the brakes. Obviously, none of it worked. And it's crazy she even survived this, in my opinion. Yeah. Eventually, the family decided maybe it might just be better for her to go away. <laughs> like, maybe we're stressing her out. Maybe we're putting too much pressure. They sent her to live with a family on a farm, in, which is what they told me happened to my sister. They sent her to live with a family on a farm in the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia in the spring of 1930. It didn't cure her and she didn't like it either, but she did feel more comfortable and the stutter was a little less pronounced. And she even, It was better because there's less people to hear her stutter. Less testing, less coronavirus cases. <laughs> no people around. She doesn't stutter. She doesn't stutter. Well, she doesn't say much because she's in another state now, but her stutter's gone. I haven't she... heard her study since she left. Study. So, she's also not studying because she's <laughs> crying 24-7. Maybe if we poison her textbooks. She was a little more comfortable, like less stifled from her family. She made a friend here. What she did get out of living there was an interest in horticulture. So after a year on the farm, she enrolled at the Pennsylvania School of Horticulture for Women in Ambler, Pennsylvania, where she made friends and became a supporter of FDR, who she looked up to as a beacon of hope because if he could overcome his disability to become president, why couldn't she become anything other yeah, than... Why couldn't she become the King's Speech or whatever? Yeah. Why, yeah. <laughs> why couldn't she become King of England like FDR? <laughs> after she graduated, she went and did something that only a rich white girl from the East Coast could do back then. Spent several years touring the great gardens of Europe with her aunt. Yeah. She went to England, Italy, France, Holland, Norway, Germany, all accompanied by her trusty aunt. And her aunt was nice to her? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't do research, did you? Why should I research the ant? I guess that was the way. Like, a woman can't travel alone in Europe. Take your ant. The gardens were all well and good, but what she really was drawn to in her travels was the exact opposite of a garden. The destroyer of gardens. Goats. Birds, oh. Crows that are listening to us. She was described as being introduced to goats in Switzerland. So I don't know if she had never seen a goat before or just really like these particular goats. But she became obsessed with goats goats That's pretty funny that was her new thing she now made it her purpose in life to travel the world promoting the benefits of having goats what sound do goats make bah okay are you saying a goat stutters and she could relate to that yeah. i mean they can't unless they're trying to say baby or something yeah and they're like bah, 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 bah. and i'm like people with stutters oh i mean i was just boy. trying to be like why goats maybe she wants to hit stuff with her as head someone, really hard as someone who loves goats and eats a lot of trash i see the appeal so she went to south africa like she was traveling the world she went to south africa to tell people all the environmental and health benefits of goat milk which ties into our intro our australian people are going to like this she went to the australian government to convince them to invest in goats instead of cows because they were better for the environment to which the australian government said that's not a knife to which she responded correct you are it's a goat <laughs> and now our new zealand people are going to like this she then went to new zealand to do the same thing and apparently had an article written about her for no other reason i could tell than just being a tourist who really liked goats <laughs> It wasn't like she spoke to the government. It was just like, this lady's here from America and she really likes goats. Um, she even brought some goats back to her parents' house in New Jersey and started selling their milk, but they kept escaping onto her neighbor's property and destroying her old passion gardens. So the city made her give up the goats, which was all well and good because around this time in the late 30s, the depression was finally coming after her dad's iron glue donut factory <laughs> or whatever, roller skate 70s disco factory. And there was no more money for her to be shuttling goats around the world in luxury and she had to get a job at his company instead. And this was the last thing that she wanted, okay. to be working not only in the job she didn't like, but for her dad, who she felt stifled by. Yeah. So stifled that she couldn't even live in the house with her family and she moved to Greenwich Village in New York City instead. And here she met a whole new type of Harry Mountain Milk producer, a man <laughs> who was so mannish, his name was Henry Mann Silver. Whoa, Hank Mann. You'll notice her name doesn't have silver in it yet, but his does. Hmm. Ah, this is contagious. She doesn't love this guy. Well, she liked him but didn't love him he was an accountant who owned her building and they formed a bond over their love of history gardens and wouldn't you know it he also used to stutter oh, so they okay. bonded over all these things problem was she still stuttered and because of that she felt undesirable and she also didn't want to pass her problem down to her child her dad what do you keep staring at you're you're, lo uh, you're it looks like a little hawk you're sitting on the chair like fonzie and you're looking off into the sunset i'm a pretty cool guy but i'm listening to a woman who's about to marry a man who she's not that interested in but they get along and she it's very sad that she, she feels like if she bears children they'll have her problems that's but i was looking at a hawk as you were doing all of that and it felt really romantic but you kind of ruined it scared him away with Thanks. your shrill voice <laughs> 
thanks for dousing my heat <laughs> like i said her dad had it she has it and if she marries this guy it's guaranteed she felt it was guaranteed but yeah. just a little bit of nutmeg and arsenic <laughs> and I'll clean that right up on top of that he was 10 years older than her and she wasn't interested in him in that way and she didn't want to be forced to become a housewife which is what would have happened in 1919 depression yeah <laughs> if you were a woman and you got married so she wasn't ready to give up traveling and she certainly wasn't ready to give up goats she wasn't really interested in any man until sometime in late 1940 or early 1941 she was at a dance and met a boy named stanley michael colin dorsky so he was an american pilot who had volunteered to be an eagle squadron 71 of the royal air force along with a few other american pilots who wanted to help england fight germany before the u.s actually entered world war ii so cool. he was uh, like a uh, an assassin if you will. <laughs> a flying assassin he was a, if you will he was a thug a, hench, a henchman <laughs> henchman henchman he was also from new jersey and she actually fell in love with him but she fell almost as equally in love with something he took her to do flying an airplane cool all signs point to her having taken her first flight ever with Stanley and just like Amelia Earhart she fell in love immediately so now it looked like she finally met a guy who made her feel accepted and comfortable and now they even had this new passion that they shared but the courtship was brief as he was called back to England to kill some more Germans but they planned to reunite on his next return home right. there wasn't one in May 1941 she learned that those Germans he had been trying to kill got to him first and he was shot down over the ocean Yikes. Gertrude stayed home from work for two weeks after this trying to cope with this she didn't have stanley the love of her life anymore but what she still had of him was his love of flying that he shared with her so he decided that no longer was she going to cry she was going to fly thank you thank you thank, thank you. you i know how to rhyme things thank you thank you i got a thesaurus thank you i took a class on lynda.com <laughs> on rhyming i took a class on lydia beetlejuice rhyming and the, the dangers of rap music rhyming and how to do the calypso <laughs> there weren't many options for women pilots in those days but her best bet was an organization called the women's air force service pilots or wasps this was a newly formed extension of the military for women pilots who would be taught to fly and then used as part of the training for the male pilots who would then be sent into battle their tasks were things like testing new airplanes towing targets for anti-aircraft target practice which sounds like the worst like <laughs> hold this apple while i shoot it i'm kind of good i know i'm just recruited but i'm <laughs> learning they were also practice targets for searchlight crews which is much less deadly unless you blind them i guess and also teaching the new male recruits how to fly so they received all the same training as their male counterparts but they were meant to relieve the burden of day-to-day -day tasks and mission for the male pilots okay these women would never be allowed to actually fight in battle they were formed in 1942 and they even had a mascot of a female gremlin in flight gear named fifi designed by Walt Disney. You're kidding. For the wasps. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. It had mouse ears, though, and a little mouse face. And instead of a plane, he made the plane look like a steamboat. They were called the Fly Girls, and okay. over 25,000 women applied to join them. Only 1,834 were accepted, and Gertrude was one of them. Wow. On May 23rd... Jennifer Lopez was a Fly Girl. Jenny from the Block? <laughs> she was just missed the cutoff. <laughs> the immortal Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> On May 23rd, 1943, she reported for duty at Avenger Field, Mm. in Sweetwater, Texas. I know you'd like that. I'm just going to talk about the Avengers for a while. Can we talk about Kirk Douglas' son again? <laughs> One of the first rules she had to learn, uh, uh, there is no wasps, um, was that all women were banned from flying during their periods. So Gertrude said, none of us ever had periods. <laughs> they all just said, no, I am not. I don't do that. I don't and, do and that. My body doesn't do that. I gave that up when I kind of joined the military. <laughs> of course, Gertrude being Gertrude, she felt apart from the others here as well, though. She was considerably older older than all the other women and didn't like partying so when she wasn't flying she'd just be home alone studying planes and it paid off because she was a smaller lady at five foot five and usually the women that were this size couldn't handle certain planes as well because they mm. physically weren't big enough gertrude got certified on every type of military plane there was wow. so she just nothing stopped she didn't want anything to stop her she would learn how to fly everything yeah she became an ace at all of them but her stutter was still an issue more so now because she was afraid it would prevent her from using the plane radio of effectively when oh, you have wow. to communicate she managed to control it but it took a lot of work and often would sing what she had to say on the radio because when she sang she wouldn't stutter which cute. is the king's speech yeah also this is the era of morse code you can't just do 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 oh, why would you in. go backwards from radio back to morse code you clearly can't talk <laughs> wow <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I'm not making fun of the victims. I'm not making fun of her. I'm not making fun of her. I'm just saying I'm you're, making... you're like trying to figure out a system and you're scared about talking into the plane radio. You want to take... I got a crazy idea. Go backwards. When you're flying an airplane, you want to take one hand off to... You, you did it right now. You didn't take your hand off the microphone. I'm not flying. Oh, my God. I'm <laughs> flying this podcast. Yes. <laughs> she graduated November 13th, 1943. Of only... Of those 18,000, only 1,074 women made it through the program. Yeah. After the academy, she was assigned to perform her tasks in Pico, Texas, and then Dallas. And this is where she first encountered a new type of fighter plane, the P-51 Mustang. So this was a high octane plane that went really fast and was not that easy to handle. So you can't do Morse code. But Gertrude, also, don't you need a cable for Morse code? Yeah, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> just tow the cable. <laughs> tow, tow it all the way. You don't need a cable. You can just make the taps and someone has to read it and be like, oh, she's saying that she's going to land soon. Wait, why doesn't she just scream? She's going to land three minutes ago when I started taking this message. <laughs> Wait till we connect this wire and then we'll get your <laughs> transmission. It was not easy to handle, but Gertrude, of course, she mastered the Mustang and was she was one of only 126 wasps that were deemed good enough to fly one of these. Damn. She loved the thrill of it so much and it made her so comfortable that suddenly she realized that her stutter had gone away and it never came back. Wow. From just the thrill and feeling like this is what I was meant to do. It just went away. She stopped it's it. It's crazy that confidence and, and <laughs> believing in yourself and reaching a certain level in your brain that yeah. you think that you are above the person you were before how you can like eliminate certain problems yeah it's amazing that some people can do that and all it took was it, did i mention that the plane was made of nutmeg so finally gertrude had some sort of grip on her life and a sense of self-worth and accomplishment all thanks to flying and being part of the wasps yeah so of course that meant the wasps had to be disbanded uh, obviously like the spice girls you're too powerful to live too stuttery to die too powerful <laughs> to live spice girls um, it was 1944 and more of the male pilots were starting to end their tours of duty and coming home which meant they needed jobs. So they felt these women who were doing a job they could do no longer should be doing that job. Right. So let's get rid of this program. Despite everything the wasps did to help train the men who went to fight, they were never considered an actual part of the military. They were classified as civilian volunteers and they got no military benefits. On top of that, they were about to be disbanded completely. And to make a stressful situation even worse, that guy Silver, who had been ingratiating himself to her dad back east, so her dad was also pressuring her. Right to settle down and marry him so everyone's like mm, why are you doing this yeah. when you, why are you flying a plane yeah, when why you, you could be a kissing plane? a man why are you flying a plane when you could be doing laundry <laughs> you could be screaming for a kitchen do you want to over easy or scrambled yeah. I hear you got over your stutter that'll make it a lot easier to take dinner orders from your husband to put even more pressure on a woman who clearly wasn't interested Silver told her that his sister had just died and left behind an orphaned one year old daughter and that he wanted to marry Gertrude so they could adopt this little girl and Gertrude could raise her as her mom. <sighs> Yeah, being a woman uh, most times in history. It was like being fun. a horse. You can carry all this, right? Yeah, <laughs> I want to help my little niece, but I can't. But, <laughs> but I could can. purchase you After from your you dad. After you marry me against your will, you can take care of this one-year-old. Yeah, for the rest of your life, like, which is not your life anymore. <laughs> it's, the rest of the baby's life. <laughs> it's terrible. Her dad piled on here saying how much he liked Silver and not so gently reminded her that she was now 32 years old and it was about time she had a husband and a baby. Plus, this isn't a biological baby, so you wouldn't risk passing. Oh, right. we, we found a loophole. This is the perfect situation. We're going to use you. a loophole that, and strangle you to death with yeah, it. Put your neck through this loophole. <laughs> Step off this chair. This all made Gertrude feel just great about herself. She felt manipulated. She felt belittled. She was also just so happy flying airplanes. She was also kind of interested in this guy on the base as well. So she didn't give an immediate answer to Silver. But with the end of the wasps coming up and all this pressure from her family, she just didn't know what else to do. So she agreed to marry Silver. Of course, women weren't allowed to be married in the Wasps, so she had to secretly take leave for a weekend mm -hmm. and went to Long Island on September 22nd, 1944 to become Gertrude Tompkins Silver. She spent the night of September 21st, the night before her wedding, crying to her sister about how she didn't want to get married, That's which great. isn't that normal. My wife did that. I did that. <laughs> What's the big deal? Three days later after the wedding, she was back at the base as if nothing happened and the Wasps were set to disband 57 days from then. So this is, she just got into a marriage. She 
did not want. Her job that she loves is about to end. This is her situation. So now finally to the Los Angeles part of this story. The makers of the P-51 Mustang was North American Aviation, which were headquartered at Mines Field. Okay. Again, now LAX. And almost a third of all aircraft from that period were being made around there at the time. So Gertrude was often staying at the base in Long Beach. And when new planes would come off the line, she'd go up to Mines Field and fly them to wherever they needed her to go. So she was constantly flying in and out of LA. Apparently, she might have been flying planes to Alaska to give to Russia to help fight Germany. Wow. Now this takes us to that fateful day, October 26, 1944. A little over a month after she had unwillingly married and a little under a month before the job she loved was about to be disbanded. The mission today was to fly some brand new P-51 Mustangs all the way to New Jersey, where they would then be taken to England for the invasion of Germany. This would have to be done over three days because women were not allowed to fly at night, I assume, because of their periods. <laughs> you get like blood in your eyes or something? I don't know how periods work. I never <laughs> asked. Women can't see at night as well as men. You must have like baby stuff in your eyes or something. I, I can't really explain. I'm not going to look into it, but I'm going to just based on this hunch that is underdeveloped, I'm going to say that you probably can't fly at night. Instead of doing this quicker, let's make it a three day dangerous journey. <laughs> so now obviously these were all brand new straight off the assembly line airplanes they were flying. So most of them had never been flown at all by the time they got to them, the wasps. So when Gertrude and the 39 other women who were on the mission today showed up, it wasn't that out of the usual that three of the planes had some minor malfunctions, Gertrude's among them. One of the doors on top was kind of bent on hers, which would have prevented her from ejecting in case of emergency. Right. Imagine. The rest of the planes took off, but these three were told since they would be taking off after 318, they'd have to spend the night in Palm Springs instead of Arizona with the rest of them. Okay. So the repairs were finished, but now the weather was a little windy and some fog had moved in, but they took off anyway at 342 p.m. heading west. And as I said at the beginning, this was the last anyone ever saw of Gertrude Tompkins Silver. But here's the final insuit to the meek lady that was Gertrude Tompkins Silver. Nobody even realized she was missing until all the other planes landed in New Jersey three days later Jeez. and they asked where's Gertrude? This is due to a crazy oversight and a lack of communication that happened before takeoff. First off, they had just switched to a new protocol for takeoffs and most of the people still didn't have a good grasp on who reports what yeah. and who keeps track of what. So in this new system, for whatever reason, the weather was only recorded from Long Beach, even though the planes were taking off at LAX, which has completely different weather. Yeah. So that was the first miscommunication. The second was that somebody wrote down the wrong number for her plane and gave her the number of one of the other ones. So when the other plane arrived safely in New Jersey, they assumed she had checked in. Mm. The third was that the air control tower didn't have any of her flight papers for no other reason I could find them. They just didn't want them. They were like giving it to them like, eh? I don't want this. Why would I want this? Why would this? I want this? Is it what? It's going to turn up in a couple of days? <laughs> so the record of her even flying that day was completely lost, which is why she wasn't even reported missing until October 30th. Jeez. Uh, the other pilots she was with had all just assumed she had turned back and never taken off because of the mechanical issues. So they just didn't even bother to check when they got to Palm Springs and she wasn't there. So nobody knew where Gertrude was. And on October 31st, this is where it's spooky, Halloween, 1944, the search began and and it wasn't until two days after that that her family was notified that she was missing. The first obvious place to look was in the ocean just off of Mines Field, the yeah. most likely area being somewhere off of Dockweiler. Yeah. But the thing with an airplane like this is that it was so sleek and fast, it would cut straight through the water without leaving any sort of debris. Damn. And any oil or anything it did leave behind would have been washed away in the five days it took them to start actually looking. Yeah. So obviously nothing was found. Then the search was expanded coverage covering most of the Southwest all the way to Arizona. The search was put on by the Air Force, the Coast Guard, and the Civil Air Patrol using 156 planes flying over 1,067 hours for 30 days. Toward the end of November, they saw what looked like a plane crash in the mountains above Palm Springs, and they sent in a search party only to find it was a rock that looked like an airplane. Isn't it always? And that's a total Halloween goof right there. Like, oh, the silhouette of the werewolf is actually yeah. my, uh, my mascot a flashlight uniform. On that. Yeah. <laughs> and they lifted it up, Candy. After this, they gave up the search and she was officially presumed dead. No evidence yeah. of a crash was ever found. After this, the Air Force made flight plans required for every individual flying instead of just the group in general. But to this day, the search still hasn't ended. In 1997, a former teacher from Hawthorne High School named G. Pat Macha took up the search. And when other people heard of this, they came forward with stories that they might have actually seen what happened that day. Wow. Some people said they remembered seeing two planes going over the Imperial Highway, but not three of 
of them. Like, how do you remember that? One guy said he was on, uh, I guess there was like two airplanes in the whole country. Um, One guy said he was on the pier that day and saw a plane. Much like the ghost plane. Here's these Glendale sound effects that (laughs) I'll never stop putting them down. He saw a plane make a sharp drop butter and then go into a controlled dive behind the clouds another said he was 12 at the time fishing for halibut and saw a plane crash that day and you didn't tell anyone he's 12 i saw a plane okay dear whatever you say a plane (laughs) i saw a japanese submarine okay (laughs) Okay. it was headed towards pearl harbor (laughs) yeah right okay sure no more war stories before bed okay (laughs) no more reading the news before bed okay but it was so long ago how could these people be sure like how could you remember that I can remember anything if I think of it. I can remember anything I make up. <laughs> Matcha got support in the 90s and some sonar archaeology and diving teams, including the head sonar guy on the searches for Lacey Peterson, wow. helped him look a few times all the way up to 2012. He searched the San Jacinto Mountains after some wreckage was spotted by a fire tower, but it was another missing plane. In 2001, their sonar found something in the Santa Monica Bay under the sand, but they never found anything except a 2001 reference that I, I won't bore you with that. Um, <laughs> it up did you get that reference into? you blow it up you monkeys that learn to evolve <laughs> you well-dressed monkeys you blow it up in 2009 they found an air force jet trainer that had been missing since 1955 but again wasn't her they keep finding all of these other missing planes the problem is that at this point so much of the plane would have deteriorated that it wouldn't even look like a plane anymore yeah it looked like a big rock it, would, <gasps> oh, no. oh, I figured it, it petrified out. <laughs> just that was the thing with the mustangs they turned to rock after 50 <laughs> years all that you would find would be guns and tires and also that part of the bay was used as a silt deposit years later yeah so it would be under that as well so to this day nothing concrete has ever been found but it's not made of concrete is it (laughs) the wasps had a much lower crash percentage than their male counterparts so only 38 were killed in the wartime and gertrude is the only one that isn't accounted for she's the only question mark from the wasp some people refer to her as the other amelia which again is so like the kids from the school ground gave her that nickname (laughs) the wasps never got the recognition they deserved until 2010 when Barack Obama awarded the Congressional Gold Medal to the 300 surviving wasps and granted them full veteran benefits. Wow, good for him. Uh, which, I mean, what, they'll use it for the next two years? <laughs> so what exactly did happen to Gertrude? Was it a simple mechanical failure that made her crash into the ocean? The P-51s were notoriously finicky and dangerous and did have a reputation of stalling at low altitudes when the nose was pulled up too quickly? Or maybe the fuel tank shifted her center of gravity behind the cockpit bit and threw her into a tailspin or maybe there was a break in the fog that the sunshine threw unexpectedly and blinded her but she was also an ace pilot who could handle a lot yeah uh, some people have looked at the situation she was in with her husband she didn't love and the job she did love coming to an end and wondered if maybe it was a suicide but her family insisted that she had so much respect for planes that she would never take one down with her like she wouldn't go out that way they had a better theory and wondered if maybe she faked her own death to get out of her new marriage right. and just disappeared to start a new life. For decades, a family joke was that whenever someone would go on a vacation, they'd say, be sure to look for Gertrude. What a joke. It's how we grieve. It's frustrating to not know what happened and what seemed... Did you say it's spooky? I would not say... I said it's frustrating. I specifically said (laughs) frustrating to not know what happened and what seemed cut and dry at first started to make more sense when you thought about the alternatives. But one thing we do know for sure... I will never start drinking goat milk over cow milk. You're I'll never a, give up cow milk. You're a problem. I'm you're a, a child problem of the person. Milk. First of all, cows have personality. How dare you? You don't kill them to drink their milk. I get that, but you're still exploiting them. Uh, goats have personality too, Greg. And so do almonds. Yeah, but they're not known for being eaten too. 